This video is actually one of two where I will be going over everything that I think the owner and the one taking care of a pet should know and prepare for. In this one, I will be going over what the owners can prepare and inform the pet sitter about just to make our life way easier and for the pet sitter to have peace in mind whenever taking care of our pet. Then to make it even more simple, there is a separate video for the pet sitters where I go through every information again, but from their perspective, just so that they have a little video guide to follow if they should get any questions. So if you're the owner of the pet, make sure to send your pet sitter part two. And if you as the pet sitter got sent this one, then awkward. Now, before I go through the guide, I know some might have clicked on this one because they are just unsure on where to find a pet sitter or how they know if someone is actually suitable to take care of their pet. First things first, I would always try and get hold of a family member or some close friends just because they more than likely know a little bit about my pet, their personality and all that. And then of course, it's also just easier in terms of communication and then maybe staying at your place and you know how they are as a person and all of this. In the case of that not being an option, you need to consider what best suits you and your pet. Is it if the pet sitter comes to your house and stays or is your pet fine with maybe going to a stranger's house? In that case, would you need to bring extra supplies, maybe a travel cage? or anything like that. You really need to consider what your pet would be most comfortable with. Really consider all your expectations for your pet sitter and maybe evaluate if they need to be paid for what they're doing, if it's uh, a lot of days or your pet is very high maintenance and needs a lot of hours of entertainment every day. All of these things to really know what you're looking for. Then you have some options. You could maybe ask around locally or make a post asking for pet sitting help. And what I like to do personally is just post in groups where people maybe have experience with the pet. Maybe they've owned one before or maybe already own one and can take some time out to also take care of your kind of pet just because they're a bit more knowledgeable about their general behavior. So I don't have to worry about them not knowing anything at all and have to teach them everything from ground zero, you know. And I feel like I have to mention it, but just of course be wary of who you entrust your pet to. And if the pet sitter is okay with it, maybe meet up with them before and just talk about the whole process. You could maybe also just do a Zoom call or talk over the phone or talk about if you want them to send pictures now and then of your pet, all of these things, just to make sure that the people that you of course do entrust your pet to aren't there to do you all the pet harm. If the pet sitter is coming to your house, I personally think it's just good manners to do a deep clean of your apartment or the living space that they're gonna be in so that everything is ready to go. In the case of the pet having a cage like Charlie, just also do a deep clean of the cage. It's good manners again, and you can maybe, you know, lessen the burden of the pet sitter having to clean more often. It could also be a reptile or a free roaming bunny pen. So cleaning the enclosure and the litter box, maybe if you're only gone for a couple of days, you can remove the burden altogether and then just clean before you go and clean when you get home again. So you have a pet sitter, your place is all tidy and clean, ready for them to come. Or maybe you have packed all your supplies, ready to go over to the pet sitter with your pet. So this is finally where my guide comes in because what I've done is made a little personal guide that you can go and fill out. It is made in a program called Canva. It's totally free and I'm not sponsored by the way. <laughs> But what you do is go to the description where there will be a link. You will be taking to Canva and a page with my guide. Now you can click on file and make your own copy. Now you will need to make an account, but take my word for it when I say that Canva is an awesome program. It's free and you're not gonna get spammed with emails or anything like that. So I would just personally make an account. Now you have your very own copy that you can just edit in and do whatever with. It's not gonna change the one that people will click on in the description or the one that I have, of course. You will just have your very own that you can then print out, give to your pet sitter whenever you meet them, or you can just download it digitally and then send it to them via email or messenger or WhatsApp or whatever. Then along with the guide, you can send the other version of this video where I will then go over the guide with them just to introduce them to all the things that's in there, why it's there, what they need to look out for, etc., so that they have a guide to their guide. <laughs> they are after all taking time out of their schedule to help us owners. So I think the least we can do is make it as easy and effortless for them as we can. Also, I just, of course, think they want to do a good job. And so having a little guide and someone going over it with them can be really nice. Guess who just started drilling?
I love apartments. Oh, maybe. Can I continue? So after our little drilling break, maybe you have had time to download the guide and then we can go through it together, so to say. You can, of course, watch this whole thing and then download it and then just fill in the blanks yourself. I have tried and made it as user friendly as I possibly could. So it will say where you need to fill in blanks, what you need to delete, and all of some extra information that I just want you to know, or maybe want the pet sitter to know all of these things. But yeah, I've tried to make it as easy as I could. Of course, if you don't understand anything, maybe I will go through it here or let me know in the comments and I can always go and change it. And then when other people download it, it will be with the changes that you maybe want me to make. So let's just go over it. The first page is, as mentioned, just a little information for you as the owners, telling you what the guide is all about and why I've made it. And also just tells you how you need to go about it. Everything in cursive is meant to be either deleted or for you to edit so that it fits your situation, of course. Now, the way you do this, super easy. If you are in doubt to do anything in Canva, it's probably how you would think you do it. So to edit any text, just you know, simply double click on it or click on it and you can move it or do whatever you want. So you can actually also customize the guide. The entire first page is actually just for you to delete. You can read the information and if you get it, you can delete the page. You can also complete the guide and then delete the page. But you just do it by clicking on the little trash can icon on the top of the page. So now we get to the real first page of the guide itself. And this is where you need to write a little bit. Here I have written expectations and practical info. I mentioned expectations earlier because you need to consider what expectations you have for your pet sitter when choosing one, but it can also be nice for them to just know or have on paper the expectations that you do have. So for example, are they allowed to bring friends to your place if that's where you are? Are they allowed to leave? How many hours do you expect them to take care of your pet? or how many days, what's the plan. And it depends a lot on what pet we're talking about, obviously, because a low maintenance pet like uh, fish or some reptiles and all of this probably won't care how many hours your pet sitter is home during the day compared to a dog or a cat or a parrot or something like that, right? But just writing down, what are your expectations? Because imagine you as a pet sitter, you come home to someone, the owner leaves, and then all of a sudden you're just left there. You don't know, can I go down for groceries or is there something I need to look out for? Uh, can I invite my friends over? Uh, how many hours can I leave if there's something I need to go do? The practical info explains itself pretty much, but it can just be stuff like uh, if the area doesn't allow noise after 8 p.m., maybe it's relevant for the pet sitter or where the spare toilet paper might be. I've been in that situation, by the way. It's not comfortable either mentally or physically, so please remember that one for me, okay? Okay. As you can probably imagine, the practical info is more, well, practical for if your pet sitter is staying at your place, but it can also be nice if you're bringing your pet to them just to know how maybe the carrier works or why you have bought certain items and what their uses are. If we then go to the next page, this is where you will put all the information regarding your pet. On the left side of this page, you can write down a little something about your pet, how their behaviors are, or if there's anything that your pet sitter needs to be aware of regarding their behavior. I did also write down that if you are having your dog looked after, it's super important to just write down how they behave on walks. Are they okay with greeting others, both dogs and people? Or are there maybe some things that scare them where the pet sitter will need to just have an extra grip on the leash? or something like that. Cause you really don't want to be in a situation where because your pet sitter is unknowledgeable about something that your dog might attack someone or are forced into uncomfortable situations because again, your pet sitter simply didn't know. So please just write this down. It can never hurt to just know how your dog is on walks. Furthermore, if your pet sitter doesn't have a lot of knowledge about the kind of animal that they are taking care of, it can be a good idea to just write down some general behaviors that maybe for someone that doesn't know a lot could look a bit weird or maybe scare them a bit, but it's totally normal. A good example of this is that when my boyfriend was taking care of Charlie for one of the first nights or afternoons, she started doing beat grinds and he didn't know what those were, got a little worried and texted me. Same thing with hormone shakes and all of these weird noises that she does. 
Now I know it's hard to describe a sound on paper, obviously, but maybe you can just write down some things that are nothing to worry about, but it's just a general behavior for your kind of animal. Further down on the left side of the page, I have just left some general information like weight and age and gender. I feel like they're just nice to have at hand. And also should something happen and they need to call a veterinarian, then they actually have this information to give them that could maybe be vital. So you know what, just add it, it doesn't hurt. Then there's of course the feeding schedule, but I feel like it explains itself pretty well. But feel free to add any days if your pet needs more feedings or delete a day if it's only once a day. I just add it two times because I feel like that's normal or what most pets do. So two times a day, morning and evening. What's important here for the pet sitter to know is just where to find the food and what foods are what and what foods should be fed at what time of day. So try and make a little system or make it easy. Describe the container maybe, describe the location of the foods so that they get the right thing. If your pet has any feeding routines or can maybe even be aggressive during feeding, make absolutely sure to add that information so that your pet sitter doesn't get hurt. Though I do feel like most pets don't really care how and when they get their food, but just writing that down to reassure them that nothing will happen whenever they feed can be a very good idea. Lastly, regarding feeding, I want to mention medicine and if your pet should take any, is it something that you want your pet sitter to also give your pet? I have just added this little section under the feeding schedule where you can write a little bit in detail about if your pet should take any medicine. If not, you can just delete it. As you can probably see, I have added just a bunch of lists for the most common animals for common health signs and all of this. It's just nice, I feel like, for your pet sitter to have a list to refer to if they notice any weird behavior. Though I would encourage you to just look through these signs. Do you agree? Do you want to delete some or add some? All of these things. Again, if your animal is on some medication or has a condition, it's also super important to just add the risks involving your medication and all of this. Also, I have in the bottom added your vet information or for you to fill in your vet information so that your pet sitter has your vet information at hand as well as everything that could be danger signs. Again, it does tell you, but the idea here was that you just simply find the pet that you have, copy and paste the health signs, put it up on the third page and then just delete the last page along with all of the other health signs, of course so that it's only for your pet. So now you have a page for your pet sitter with just some expectations and general info for them to know how they should act around your pet and what you expect of them to do while pet sitting. Then you have a page of all the information about your pet, a little bit about their behavior, how you want the pet sitter to feed your pet and just some overall info should it be necessary. And then lastly, you just have a list of danger signs if anything should happen and you also have your vet information. So I think it's a super cool guide that just overall sums up what is nice to know and what your pet sitter should know while taking care of your pet. That pretty much concludes my little guide, but again, all of the information should be in the document and for you to follow. If there's something that's written in a weird way and you just don't get what I'm saying, which there's a high chance of, let's be honest, then let me know so that I can change it and everyone gets that version. Additionally, I did make this guide with all pets in mind, which can mean that I have maybe left something out or just completely forgotten to add a section about some different pets. So please, if there's anything you want me to add, then just write it down in the comments and we can figure it out and I can maybe add a whole new section because again it's with all pets in mind so that it's super easy and I know I say that and there's paws all over the place but they look super cute okay. <laughs>